We're looking at local, state, and national politics today. The vice president's visit to Jacksonville made an impact on a local food bank leader. It's probably going to go down as the biggest moments of my life. I was so honored um, to be able to meet with, with Vice President Harris. Susan King joins us with her takeaways from meeting with Kamala Harris. State lawmakers continue to debate and discuss what some call an anti-protest bill, while supporters say it's about sharpening the focus for safe and lawful demonstrations. This is consistent with current First Amendment case law and has nothing to do with people peaceably assembling and protesting. You'll hear from Neptune Beach State Rep Cord Bird in support and a state attorney with Gainesville roots in opposition. Plus, Jacksonville City Council confrontations in the final meeting of the month of March. Terrence Freeman joins us. All those topics on This Week in Jacksonville. So glad you're with us. We start on the local side this morning with Terrence Freeman, an at-large member of Jacksonville City Council. Council seem to have a lot going on this week, including a debate about automatic salary increases. More importantly, I want to hear about the money approved to replace septic tanks in the Christabel neighborhood, almost $27 million combined from the city and from JEA. Yes, Ken, and, and thank you for having me. And, and that, was, that bill was great for that community. Um, it is an area where we not only are fulfilling promises for the past, but we're bringing back this conversation of trying to bring our community into the 21st century. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. Um, and I feel that as we continue to work hard to do it, we're gonna also look out for the, the health of our river, we're going to look out for the quality of life of the people who live in those areas, as well as attract businesses and jobs. Well, I, yeah, I, I love what you mentioned there. That, that's what we read on the bill. The intent of the project, improve quality of life in these areas and reduce the amount of harmful nutrients that often find their way into the St. John's River and other local waterways. That's big, not just for this neighborhood, but uh, you talk about modernizing. Should any neighborhood in Duval County be on septic tanks anymore? Shouldn't we be advancing there? That's a great question, and, and one, I, I think that I would feel best leaving that to the, to the residents that are, are living in those areas. But I will say that for the parts of our communities that for years have faced infrastructure challenges and for 50 plus years right. now are really looking for these ideas and these promises that were made to be fulfilled, this is a yet another step in that direction. And we have to continue to do that work to make sure that those families and those homes and those neighborhoods are brought into the 21st century. Well, it was interesting because on that Tuesday night meeting, there wasn't a lot of discussion about it. it was like okay let's vote because this is the discussion had been the the promises had been right. it was a matter of where do we find that money again on 27 million dollars let's talk about the uh, nope bill introduced by rory diamond something that he called an attempt to make the salaries of city council members more transparent eventually got a unanimous uh, thumbs up but only after an amendment which uh, councilman diamond says guts the bill how did you decide what to do on this particular bill well i'm one kent that i'm not opposed to a compromise and I'm grateful that this was yet another example of where uh, we as a body compromised and came to a, a conclusion to pass the amendment, which I think offers the transparency that my colleague was looking for. Um, as I shared with him that night, I appreciate and appreciated him bringing that bill to our attention because I understood the spirit of it. And as I listened to my colleagues, and, and we just have such a strong counsel when it comes to what each particular member brings, I landed in a place where transparency, is what we're looking for, and that amendment is what it offered. Yeah, how'd you feel about uh, the, the name calling? Now, there was name calling ahead of time, uh, according to your colleagues, but um, yeah, some of the colleagues even stood up to say, hey, I'm offended by what you said about this. Uh, was this mishandled by some of the colleagues on council? Well, I'll say this, um, as one that invites students to come to City Hall and to watch us conduct the business of the city, me personally, I'm gonna always try to act in a manner that I think is reflective of how I look forward to them leading one day. Um, we're not Washington, D.C. We're not Tallahassee, we're Jacksonville. I love Jacksonville and I have a love for each and every one of my colleagues. And so I'm gonna always treat them with that level of respect. Unfortunately, this process uh, shows sort of the ugly side of the business and the debates that take place. But uh, we all have thick skin up there and, and I don't feel that anyone took it personal. Um, but I'm glad that this bill passed as amended and it was unanimous. Every council member voted to support it and we got it right for our city. Once, once you got to that point, yes. as you mentioned, of compromise, right? Yes, sir. Then it was unanimous. Let's talk a little bit about this. This week you hosted a meeting at City Hall. You brought people together, parents, 
coaches. Talking about safety, and this goes back to a little bit of what happened in Mandarin here a couple of weeks ago where there was a gunshot fired at this football jamboree. Uh, what came out of that from your perspective? Any, any progress made there? Absolutely. Uh, the purpose of the meeting was to listen. And in that room, we had coaches that represented close to 1,000 kids in our city. Um, it breaks my heart that our kids are going out and competing and having to experience these awful occurrences. Um, and so the big question was, well, what do we do? Well, some of the concerns were safety. We want to feel safe. We want security. So I've talked with Sheriff Mike Williams. We communicated, and he had a representative at that meeting. And JSO has offered the, to have the league's presidents inform them when we're going to have big events. And they're going to inform the zone commanders, who then will have their officers drive by often, if not even park there while they're doing paperwork or doing some other things, or just get out the cars and meet people. The coaches all said just the car alone, they feel will offer a certain level of security. Um, another thing that was mentioned was maintenance. Um, we have the fourth largest park system in, in the country, and our director of parks has done all he can. He's doing a great job of trying to, but there's some things that fall through the cracks unless coaches bring them to our attention. Things as simple as closing some gates that are allowing access to bad actors to get in and out of these events and limiting their ability to control who's coming in and out of. Those things will be addressed moving forward. Yeah. And then reuse and reactivating of parks. We have so many of our parks that these teams can use and we're not able to do so. So final thing here, we got a, a minute yes, or so left, but you're a coach as well. Yes, sir. Is, is it a matter of knowing your athletes and some kids who may be bad actors or is it always some other element that come in beyond just the athletes, the kids who are there trying right. to enjoy sports. Well, I, I do believe that there, there are some elements that may come in, but we have to remember sports is an intervention and a prevention program. And so where else can we get a thousand plus kids and sow into their lives some life lessons like conflict resolutions and things that we know are gonna help them do life better. As a city, I think it's time for us to double down on invention, intervention and prevention, and I'm looking forward to this conversation moving on. Yeah, well, uh, best success, because I know you're coaching all the time, uh, and appreciate your thoughts on what's happening in the Jacksonville City Council. Kent, thanks thanks so much here. for having me. All right. So we move on to state news in a moment. The back and forth over House Bill 1, known as the anti-riot bill. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. There are never-ending ways to describe our signature classics at Olive Garden. Creamy, melty, mouth-watering, but you know them simply as your favorites. And now add Asiago Tortelloni Chicken Alfredo to your list. Only at Olive Garden. It's important when you hire the largest injury law firm in the world that you're treated in a very personal and attentive way and with respect. That's why every client doesn't get just one lawyer, you get your own team, so you're never lost in the shuffle. And listen to this, you also get our dedicated client satisfaction department 24 seven. If you have any concerns about your case, our guarantee is you'll hear back before the day is over. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people. JEA is proud to promote local economic development by offering specialized programs and support to companies that move and expand here because more work means more jobs and growing our local economy benefits us all. Visit domorewithjea.com today. Hey, Rita, with 3% cash back on dining, including takeout from Chase Freedom Unlimited, you're always earning. Then this is officially a takeout week. That's a good choice, Rita. Bon appetit. Earn 3% on dining, including takeout, and so much more. Chase, make more of what's yours. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. With great deals, get ready to turn your dreams into reality. Right now, during Toyota's Ready, Set, Go event, lease a new 2021 Toyota RAV4 LE for just $249 a month for 36 months. That's just $249 a month on the Toyota RAV4. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Your all-time hero, your once-in-a-lifetime chance to finally ask that question. Okay, Precious Baggins 25. Okay. You know, I've always wanted to know... But if slow upload What's speeds that? were to ruin your only shot because you don't have AT&T oh, Fiber, uh, just remember, you're not a bad fan. You just need uh, better internet. Got my ears done and everything. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 20 times faster upload speeds than cable. Get AT&T Fiber. Plan starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1877 only att There are never-ending ways to describe our signature classics at Olive Garden. Creamy, melty, mouth-watering, but you know them simply as your favorites. And now add Asiago Tortelloni Chicken Alfredo to your list. 
Only at Olive Garden. When there's hope. When you soar. When you help. There's only one news team you can count on to cover the stories that lift you up. Anchors and reporters who put you first, making it worth your time to watch every day. When you want a news team who understands why local is what matters most, watch News 4 Jacks every night starting at 5, the local station. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. There's a bill in the state capitol that has stirred up emotions from the day it was introduced, and we've talked about it here on our show. House Bill 1 and Senate Bill 484 have been labeled the anti-riot bill. Some think it's anti-protesters bill. Joining us remotely uh, is Hillsborough County State Attorney Andrew Warren. Mr. Warren is from Gainesville joining us now. I appreciate the time. I know that uh, this bill, as I understand it, would enhance penalties against people who riot, vandalize, or loot, and Republicans are saying that. That's an effort, effort to stop public disorder. As a state attorney, where do you stand on this? Well, Ken, thanks so much for having me. I mean, this anti-protest bill is an unconstitutional waste of time. There's so many things wrong with it, it's really hard to know where to begin, but I focus on the three biggest problems. One is that it fails to address the most urgent needs of Floridians. Secondly, it tears some corners off the Constitution because it's encroaching on these fundamental rights of speech and assembly, and third, it doesn't give me as a prosecutor any tools that we don't already have to hold people accountable for committing crimes. You know, and that, you just mentioned one of those phrases I saw attributed to you. I think you had sent a, a letter to lawmakers or whatever. That, that phrase tears a couple corners off the Constitution. Expand on that. W what do you mean by that? Well, what this does is it criminalizes peaceful protests, and that's encroaching on those freedoms of assembly and speech. And it does it because it defines the term riot extremely broadly. Basically, if you have 100 people who are peacefully exercising their First Amendment rights to assembly and speech, and three of them smash a car window, under this bill, the other 97 have now committed a felony. And that should terrify anyone who cherish, cherishes our Constitution, from environmental activists to Second Amendment advocates. Okay, I'm processing that. Yeah, that if you're not directly involved in a criminal act, but you could still be charged with a crime, that's what you're saying. That's absolutely right. What it's done is it's changed the legal definition from someone who's rioting under the current law means someone who's actually involved in committing destructive or violent conduct. But under this bill, it changes that definition to mean any person who is at a public assembly where three or more people are doing those really bad things. That's the really bad part about the bill. Rather than distinguishing between peaceful protesters and criminals, this law blurs the line between them, and that's where it violates our fundamental freedoms. Well, we're going to hear from Cord Bird in a moment, one of the sponsors of this bill. Uh, the authors of the bill, though, say, and I'm reading a quote here from the text of it, it gives law enforcement and prosecutors additional tools to prevent violence and property destruction. As a prosecutor, don't, don't you want tools for that? We do, but we already have those tools. And exhibit A for that is the fact that in Hillsborough County, where we had one night of widespread looting and rioting, we are prosecuting the people who committed those crimes. The additional tools that this bill supposedly gives us are really just increased penalties and new laws that are repetitive of existing laws. Trying to improve public safety by increasing penalties is a lazy and a frankly ineffective way to address public safety. Now, I'm, I'm hearing the uh, I'm hearing kind of the opposite from the the supporters of it. They're saying, "Hey, uh, the way the law is now is too broad, so this will narrow the focus a little bit." How do you feel about that? Well, it's the exact opposite. What the law does is it actually greatly expands the definition of people who are committing a crime at a peaceful protest. We have laws on the books that clearly distinguish between rioting, looting, destroying violence versus peaceful protest. This law changes, blurs that distinction between them, and it ends up criminalizing free speech and free assembly. Yeah, and I was going to ask about this. You just mentioned it. Do you need these kind of changes? It doesn't sound like you do uh, for prosecuting people from the disturbances we saw last year in Tampa. No, we don't at all. I mean, the issue that law enforcement and prosecutors have 
with these types of protests where people are committing crimes as a small part of them or even a big part of them is identifying who did what. It's identifying the wrongdoers amidst all the other people who are behaving appropriately. This law doesn't help us address that issue. All it does is enhances penalties and blurs the line between the peaceful protesters and the criminal actors. Let me wrap up with this. Not that it's a small question. It's a really big one. But let me at least ask, do you believe this relates to the claims of systemic racism within the criminal justice system? I think it does, Ken. I think this is a regression to a failed philosophy of a generation ago where increasing penalties and locking more people up somehow makes our community safer. And it doesn't do that. I mean, I've heard the people who say that this bill is needed, which it's not. And I've heard people say that it doesn't impact freedoms. And I'm not saying that all those supporters are intentionally encroaching on people's constitutional rights. But the reality is anyone who says this doesn't impact our freedoms either, either hasn't read the First Amendment or hasn't read this bill. All right, State Attorney Andrew Warren, I appreciate your time and uh, good to talk to somebody from our area in Gainesville. And uh, we will see how this plays out. I appreciate your opinions today. Thank you so much. Have a great day. So this bill has a lot of Republican support. State Representative Cord Bird, I mentioned a moment ago, he explained this week why he's in favor, saying it clarifies exactly what illegal conduct would be. Most of the arguments that are made against the bill could be made against any criminal law and would actually advocate for getting rid of all laws because any, any criminal law has the potential, potential for abuse. Um, this does, has nothing to do with implicating the First Amendment and this is consistent with current First Amendment case law and has nothing to do with people peaceably assembling and protesting. And I would ask anyone who opposes it, tell me which of the conduct that is prohibited by the bill do they think should be lawful? Should burning a building down, should attacking another person, should throwing a brick through a window, which of the illegal contacts should be legal and, and under peaceably assembling? The companion bills in the House and Senate continue moving through the process, and we will continue tracking them for you. All right, from a national politics perspective, America's second in command came to our area. What happened in the vice president's visit? That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Vacation in your own backyard with an above-ground pool for only $39 a month, only at Splash. All above-ground pools up to 40% off. That's right, up to 40% off and only pay $39 a month. Get your backyard vacation ready and save. Now at Splash. When you're injured and your livelihood is on the line, choosing a law firm can be confusing. You may have doubt, but with Harold & Harold, there's hope. At your free consultation, we listen to you and learn your story. We're only paid after there is a recovery. Harold & Harold. The unknown is not empty. It's a storm that crashes and consumes, replacing thought with worry. But one thing can calm uncertainty, an answer. Uncovered through exploration, teamwork, and innovation. An answer that leads to even more answers. Mayo Clinic, you know where to go. There's always more to love at Subaru of Jacksonville during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Subaru of Jacksonville, Florida's only seven-time Dealer Raider Dealer of the Year winner, has 0% financing on new Subarus. Purchase the 21 Outback for just $26,299 or lease a new Forester or Outback for only $249 a month. Plus a complimentary national lifetime warranty or two years maintenance. There's more to love at Subaru of Jacksonville, your favorite Subaru dealership for a generation and counting. Drive a Subaru. You'll buy a Subaru. Reggie Miller chose to bubble at Wendy's so he could wake up with the official breakfast of March Madness. Reggie! Kenny Smith chose somewhere else. I made the wrong choice. Why, Kenneth? Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's. Official breakfast of March Madness. Things seem to get more expensive as years go by. Take groceries. Prices have been going up there. And keeping up with your health? That's up too. But did you know at FPL, what you pay for energy has gone down over the last 15 years? And that's something we can take to the bank. At Stanley Steamer, we love homes. It's why we started cleaning them over 70 years ago and why we still continue today. According to the CDC, cleaning is a necessary first step of any disinfection process. We use detergents and cleaning agents to ensure that your home is prepared for whatever life brings in. Whatever home means to you, we're ready when you are to make sure your space is clean and that you and the ones you care about most are safe.
At Farah and Farah, we know accidents can be expensive. So when you work with us, you'll never have to pay out of pocket for our legal services. If we don't win your case, you owe us nothing. It's that simple. Farah and Farah, here for you, here for good. Vacation in your own backyard with a hot tub for only $89 a month, only at Splash. That's right, hot tubs on sale for as low as $89 a month. Or swim to a healthier you in a swim spa. Get your backyard vacation ready and save. Now it's Splash. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Thanks for staying with us today. Susan King is the president and CEO of Feeding Northeast Florida, and she's joining us now in studio. Susan King, you... This was a big week. You got to meet with the Vice President of the United States. I know you've had several days to digest it now, but what's your big takeaway from your interaction with Kamala Harris? It was an extraordinary honor, I mean, and a privilege. And um, I came away from that meeting really feeling like uh, we have an administration that cares about the issue of hunger in our community and, and around our country and is really focused on helping us solve this issue. What, what relayed that? What expressed that to you? Hey, we care and we're going to get involved here. She was very interested in, in what we are seeing in our community, what we're seeing on the ground, and how we're working towards solving that, and what resource, additional resources that we need. You know, we, we know that it takes a strong commitment from both the, the, the charitable food businesses, if you will, this whole network of, of food pantries, food banks, the Feeding America Network, and all the other organizations. But it also takes a strong commitment by the federal government to support federal nutrition programs. I mean, we can't do that heavy lift alone. So it, she conveyed their commitment to that. Well, one of the things that was impressive, so uh, I'll talk about this uh, in a moment, but uh, the vice president was at your headquarters there, your facility as part of the Help Is Here tour and focusing on COVID relief. But tell us about the impact uh, of the pandemic on people when it comes to having food to eat. It's been a huge impact, right? It, is, it has been an incredibly um, interesting and strained year for organizations like ours because it really was overnight, as we all saw. We are a recovery food organization, which means we pick up from grocery stores, kind of end of life food, sort of the basic premise of our, our business were distribution and logistics. Well, when those store shelves were empty, when you went to your grocery store, so were our trucks. And so as we saw need increase, we saw supply decrease. So we've been pivoting this entire year, uh, you know, an overused word, but one that's clearly right. reflects what we've been doing. Um, and we are seeing probably 80 to 90% of an increase even now in what we, were, what we were distributing a year ago. I will tell you that we probably could be distributing more as food is available. There just is a, a, a significant need in our community. People who live paycheck to paycheck, it takes a long time to rebound from those even yeah. when jobs return. Well, and because not having those paychecks. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm gonna look at some of the notes that I've got here. Uh, estimates that there are 326,000 food insecure individuals in Northeast Florida. I think that alone would probably stun some people. Maybe help people understand what is food insecurity? It's food insecurity, um, there's a number of degrees of food insecurity, but it means that you don't necessarily know where your next meal is coming from. It might be that that refrigerator is empty by the end of the week. Um, before the next paycheck comes, or the cupboards are bare. It's, um, it has a significant effect on children and how they grow and how you are secure in, uh, you know, food is one of those things we rely on three times a day. Right. And to not have it is, is really impactful. You know, we are seeing so many people in need. We estimate one in four children in, in Duval County is food insecure, imagine one in four children and one in six adults. That's true for seniors, it's one in six in Duval County and nationally that number is one in 12. We have a lot of work to do to, to really stabilize our community in terms of hunger. 
So one of the things we've shown photos a few moments ago about this roundtable discussion that you had there at the headquarters it included the Florida Agriculture Commissioner, Nikki Freed, uh, Congressman Al Lawson, two members of city council, a school district superintendent, all of them, by the way, guests on this show. And I said, I need to talk to Susan King. I need her to explain to our community what this is all about. Uh, how does the American Rescue Plan address this crisis in terms of food insecurity? So one of the things that we as an organization are always looking at is how do we empower families? How do we create situations that address poverty? So some of the factors, uh, some of the things that are included in this act are um, an extension of SNAP benefits, a 15% increase that is extended through September. There's also an, an extension of the um, pandemic EBT, um, which helps provide for children who typically re receive um, free and reduced lunches in school and when they're not in school. These are things that help the family help themselves. And, you know, our, our motto is, how do we shorten the lines? Those lines that we have all seen on television, um, nobody wants to sit in a food line. Nobody wants to, to get food that they didn't necessarily pick. It's, it's an emergency situation. But these are, these are programs, federal programs, that have been proven to really significantly impact, um, make a dent yeah. in that hunger. You, you clearly are... Uh, excited about the possibilities. Would it have mattered if it if the last name of the vice president was Harris or Biden or if it could have been Pence or someone else? Does it that political stripe matter or does it just matter that the federal government is here saying let's understand your community? You are so correct and it absolutely does not matter. It is more that we have a voice and that somebody is listening. It, uh, there is no politics around hunger. We are, we are here to solve a problem that is a social problem for any one of us that might find themselves in that charitable food line. And about 40% of the people that are accessing charity food have never needed it before in their lives. This really is our neighbors and people who have just hit on hard times as a result of the pandemic. So I am I, I'm glad you asked that question. People sometimes think that this, there is some politics around it. It absolutely is not. Our goal and our mission as an organization is to is to solve hunger in this eight county area in Northeast Florida. Yeah, well, Susan King, feeding Northeast Florida, explaining why this is a crisis right now. I appreciate the time. I know there are probably a lot of people watching this morning who say I didn't understand. Uh, it was that big uh, of an issue. Thanks for explaining it this morning. Thanks so much for having me. All right. So thank you for being with us today. Next week. It's Easter, so we are gonna step aside for a special presentation from Celebration Church in Jacksonville. After that, it's April, and we'll be back each Sunday morning at this time with guests uh, with important topics to talk about in Northeast Florida. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17, and you'll find episodes online at news4jax.com. Why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news.